Hello and welcome to 13.7, Linear Correlation and Regression. Now I'll, I'll admit, regression sounds like a negative thing, it's really not a negative thing, it's not like depression. Okay, linear correlation is used to determine whether there is a relationship between two quantities, and if so, how strong is that relationship? The linear correlation coefficient r is a unitless measure that describes the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. If the value is positive, as one variable increases, the other increases. So if it has a positive relationship, as one increases, the other increases. If it's negative, as one, decre as one increases, the other decreases. Like that. So as time goes on, whatever the other quantity is is going to go down. The variable r will always be a value between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. So scatter diagrams, that's a visual aid used with correlation. It's, that's the scatter diagram. It's a plot of the points by a very meaning two variable data. The independent variable x generally is a quantity that can be controlled. The dependent variable y is the other variable. The value of r is a measure of how far a set of points varies from a straight line. The greater the spread, the weaker the correlation, and the closer the r value is to zero. The smaller the spread, the stronger the correlation, and the closer the r value is to one. So here's an example of where r is one. Very strong correlation makes a nice line. Here, it's all going in the same general direction. It's strong. It's not great. It's strong. Here, tends to be going the same direction. It's moderate. It's kind of spread out. Looks like there's a line going up the middle. This one, there's really no way. There's a line going that way, that way, that way. You don't know. No correlation. Here, R is negative 1. So as X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. Has a very strong correlation. Makes a nice line here. R is negative. It's strong, but it's a little spread out. It's very spread out. Still, you can see somewhat of a correlation. And here again, no correlation. Now you can calculate R. It's a pretty complicated calculation, and often we have machines do these things for us. It's something you can do by hand. So the formula to calculate the correlation coefficient R is as follows. And the number of data points times the sum of X times Y minus the sum of all the X's minus, uh, times the sum of all the Y's over the square root of n times the sum of the x squareds minus the sum of x's then squared times the square root of n times the sum of the y squareds minus the sum of y of that quantity squared. So example one, words per minute versus mistakes. There are five applicants applying for a job as a medical transcriptionist. The following shows the result of the applicants when asked to type a chart. Determine the correlation coefficient between the words per minute typed and the number of mistakes. So Ellen has 24 words per minute, 8 mistakes. George, 67 with 11 mistakes. Philip, 53 with 12 mistakes. Kendra, 41 with 10 mistakes. And Nancy, 34 with 9 mistakes. So if we look at this table of the words per minute, the mistakes, words being x, mistakes being y, the x squared column would be just squaring these values. This is the sum of all the x's. This is the sum of all the y's. So here are the x squareds. These values here squared. And this is the sum of all those things squared. These are all the y values squared. And here's the sum of all those y squareds. And this column is the sum of the x times y's. So this column represents 24 times 8, 67 times 11, 53 times 12, and so on. So with that data, let's put all the pieces in the right places. So how many pairs of data do we have? We have five pairs of, da of data. So then this is going to be the sum of x, y. That's this one here. So that's going to be 2281 minus the sum of the sum of the x's, sum of the y's. So we have five times the sum of the x, y's 
minus the sum of the x's times sum of the y's. Then we have n again, n is 5. And this is going to be the sum of the x squareds. It's 10,711. Minus the sum of the x's here, and they get to be squared. And we have 5, again, now the sum of the y squareds, that's 5, 10. The sum of the y's are going to be 50 squared. So this is going to give us, in the numerator, 455 over, from this expression, 74.793 times, from this expression, 7.07107. And that's going to be 0 0.86033 is the R. And that's a pretty good correlation. I mean, you're rarely going to get it to be 1, especially when you do experimental data. That's pretty good. Anything above 8.3 is really good. I'd call that a strong relationship. Okay, so now, you may be asked to find each of these pieces, and you put them in this, this formula. And it's helpful to make a chart like I had on the previous page. I'm going to go on to linear regression. It's going to use another formula like this. Linear regression is not a bad, scary thing. And again, typically we have a machine doing this. Linear regression, and by the way, if you have a TI-83 or 89, it'll do linear regression for you. Linear regression is the process of determining the linear relationship between two variables. The line of best fit, that's the regression line or the least squares line, that we mean the same thing, is a line such that the sum of the squares, the vertical distances from the line to the data points on a scatter diagram is a minimum. So you want to find this, the line that these distances, the, the square of these distances will be the, the smallest possible. I know back in the day, I know like when I was in high school, we hadn't learned this yet. And so we used to just look, you know, plot our data and draw a line through it and come up with a line. Wouldn't necessarily be the best line. This formula will give us the best line that best estimates going through that data set. So here's the formula for it. y equals mx plus b. This is line, linear, so it's the equation of a line, where m is n times the sum x, the sum of the xy's minus the sum of x's, the sum of y's. Hey, that looks like the numerator we saw a few minutes ago. Over n times the sum of the x squareds minus the sum of x's squared. That's part of that denominator we saw before without the radical. B would be the sum of the y's minus this m over here times the sum of the x's over n, the number of data points. So we're going to use the previous example. Use the data in the previous example to find the equation of the line that relates the number of words per minute and the number of mistakes made while typing a chart. Graph the equation of the line of best fit on the scatter diagram that illustrates the set of bivariate data points. So from the previous problem, we have this, these, uh, this information. So we're going to put the appropriate information in this chart. Our n is 5. And then we have the sum of xy. The sum of xy is 2,281 minus, this is sum of x's, that's 219. Sum of y's would be 50 over 5 times the sum of the x squareds. 10,711 minus the sum of the x's, which is 219, and we square that amount. It's going to be 455 over 5594, and it's a decimal 0.081337. Now to get B, B is going to be the sum of the y's minus m times the sum of the x's over n. So B is going to be 50 because the sum of the y's is 50 minus this value, 0 0.081337 times the sum of the x's, which is 219. So B equals... 6.437. So y equals 
0.0813x plus 6.437. I'm going to scroll up here, so feel free to pause if you need to, more time to write that down. So to graph y equals, and this should have been 6.437, plot at least two points and then draw the graph. So if we go at three points here, 10, 20, 30, these are, plug these in, you're going to get these points from the equation. And then on this graph here, what I have plotted, the green are the actual data points, and the red are the points plotted from the equation. So this is the line of best fit, and these are the actual data points. So like this one, the person had a higher number of words per minute and a higher number of mistakes. Here's at 24.8. Here's a person who had greater words per minute but fewer mistakes. So being below the line is actually a good thing. Getting above the line means you have too many mistakes. So this is the person who was at 53 words per minute with 12 mistakes. And this one here is the person with 64 words per minute and 67 words per minute with 11 mistakes. And that'll do it for 13.7. That'll do it for Chapter 13. So do the homework and send me your questions. Thank you. Have a good day.